Well, hi there. This is a mink. If you're a fan of Joseph Carter, the mink man, you're probably quite aware of minks and their awesomeness. Minks are weasels, and I love weasels. Honestly, I love the whole Mustelid family. This group includes badgers, wolverines, otters, martens, polecats, ferrets, honey badgers, and of course, mink. <laughs> You're so cute. This particular mink is Boone, and he's an awesome little dude. The Mustelids are just a hardcore group of little guys that punch way above their weight class. They are absolutely incredible mammals. And mammals are amazing creatures. As pets, they stand out because of their intelligence and endothermy. I don't say warm blood because there are lots of cold-blooded animals that keep their blood way warmer than many warm-blooded animals. But mammals are endothermic, as in they get their heat, their thermy, from within using energy from food. This carries with it some pros and some cons in my book. Pros being that you don't need to provide basking spots, and in many cases, mammals can go with you to places where you just couldn't bring an ectothermic animal like a reptile. You can keep them out of their enclosures for a long time. And with that, let's talk about the cons. Some of them are very social and will crave interaction. Leaving them alone for even a few hours can lead them to make a lot of noise and potentially become very destructive. Also, heating your body with food means that you need to eat all the time, and you poop just as often. Mammals are, in general, high maintenance, smelly, and loud. But that doesn't mean that they aren't perfect for many people. So if a mammal turns out to be the right pet for you, is the mink the best pet mammal for you? To help you sort this out, we're actually going to score the mink based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the mink a score of one out of five. Mink are inquisitive, soft, and they love to play. That said, they can bite really hard. How difficult they are to handle can depend dramatically on how the mink in question was raised and socialized. A wanagthe, to use Joseph's term, or imprinted bottle-raised baby, can be extremely handleable, at least by whoever the people are that happen to raise them. A kuhe, or a mink that was socialized after weaning, can be handled almost like a snapping turtle, using the tail to stabilize the mink and then supporting its weight from below. A craze, or a mink that hasn't been socialized at all, will probably tear you apart if you try to restrain it. Being mustelids, they also can musk, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're trying to handle a, a mink, especially a mink that doesn't really want to be handled, they do relax more if you restrain them by the tail and not by the body. And in all cases, it takes a ton of consistent work to tame them and then to keep them tame. Uh, they're sort of like a green iguana or a Nile monitor. It takes hours a day, but it is possible, especially for a hand-raised baby. I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to our rad fans and stinking rad fans at Patreon who have made opportunities like this possible. And, and one of the things we try to do to pay it forward to you guys is we provide every week an extra video called Patreon Extras that just contains a little bit of information, things we talked about, things we joked about that happened while we were filming that, you know, didn't make it into our main video because they were a little bit off topic, but man, they were fun. And I can tell you today that Joseph and I had a great conversation about whether or not the ferret is the lamest weasel. And they're going to get that. And so, thank you, and maybe that'll entice you a little to check it out yourself. When it comes to care, we give the mink a score of 3 out of 5. Let's just face it, most mammals aren't great for care. One thing that really helps with these guys is that they self-litter train, and they also can be left with dry food for a few days if you need to be gone, as long as you leave them with a good source of water. One thing that is probably worth mentioning is if they have an open water source, because these are almost like otters in their behavior, they will try to swim in it. So a water bottle might be your best option if you want to keep them hydrated in something they won't swim in and flip over. That said, it's actually fairly easy to keep them alive. And this is evidenced by the fact that the they have been successfully farmed by fur farms in huge numbers for a very long time. 
However, there's a big difference between just keeping them alive and keeping them from becoming little monsters. You're going to need to provide an enclosure, a water bottle, some meat-based foods, and a shallow litter box, and with that, they'll stay alive. But you're going to need to spend considerable time with them every single day to keep them from turning into tiny little honey badgers, because that's basically what they are. And again, I say a water bottle because they aren't just a little honey badger, they're also a little bit otter. They are great aquatic hunters and they will try to swim in any water that they can find. This also probably means if you're going to let them out in your house, you should probably keep your toilet seat closed and maybe put something heavy on top. This is an animal that is easy to keep alive, but will need a lot of daily interaction. Really, a lot. Like, this is a Nile monitor stuffed into a little weasel. So, be prepared for that. If you want a weasel that doesn't take this kind of time, what you want is a ferret, not a mink. Should we do a video about ferrets in the future? They are pretty cool. Though, it's hard to say they're as cool as a mink. Even under the best of circumstances, they're probably going to bite you from time to time. So just be prepared for that. It's part of the package. They can't drop their tail, though. That's pretty good. This video is sponsored in part by Ridge Wallets, who really do make a really cool, minimalistic wallet. I've actually been carrying this one for several months now, and I've been really, really happy with it. And, and just to show you the difference between the Ridge wallet and the wallet that you're probably carrying right now, Jason, give me your wallet. Oh, crud. <laughs> incriminating <laughs> Look at this monstrosity. Is this what you're carrying around now? Jason is a ridiculously organized person, so he's probably not carrying around all of the ridiculous garbage that you probably have stuffed in here, old receipts and who knows what, so that you end up, you know, you have more cow here than, well, anywhere else. This, you don't need this. You need this. Probably. I strongly recommend it. It's a great wallet. I've really enjoyed it. Here's a link right there to where you can check out the Ridge wallet. So do it. There's, it's also down in the description. And if you use the coupon code CLINT, you get 10% off. That's pretty rad. When it comes to hardiness, we give the mink a score of 3 out of 5. With proper care, they're probably going to do pretty well, but there's always the possibility that it could just get sick and die for things that are completely out of your control. When it comes to availability, we give the mink a score of 2 out of 5. You are not going to see mink at pet stores or reptile expos. And uh, honestly, you wouldn't want to get one from one of those places anyway. You are going to want to get one from a breeder and you're going to want to raise it yourself. Otherwise, what you've purchased is a tiny little monster. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the mink a score of 2 out of 5. The proper enclosure for them will be fairly expensive. You're going to need a litter box, a water bottle, cage furnishing, toys, food. All, all those things are reasonably affordable. Even the mink will not be insanely expensive. If you have to ship it, shipping is more complicated than it is for a reptile, so that's going to cost more. But it's not out of this world expensive. Honestly, the cost of keeping a mink is far more time than it is money. That stuff's going to cost you something. That's, it's not a cheap animal to keep. But my goodness, the time you're going to have to put into it. That doesn't factor into this score, but it should factor into your decision. And that is why, overall, we give the mink a score of 2 out of 5. Which isn't to say it's a great pet. I uh, wouldn't recommend it. Mink are mink and rad. But they aren't even the best pet weasel. This is a major commitment. And one of the main reasons that you might seriously consider getting a mink is if you plan to train it for hunting. And that is why I want to turn over a little bit of time to Joseph Carter to share a little bit about what it's like raising and training mink to hunt. Hi everybody, my name is Joseph Carter. A lot of you may know of me as the Mink Man. And uh, this is my little mink, Boone. He is a mink that I have personally raised from a young kit. Um, he's only a few months old, so he's still pretty young, but he's typically, or he's, he's for the most part, what you could expect out of an adult. Um, he's passed most of the baby stage, a little bit of baby still in him, but he's mostly adult at this point as far as mentally speaking and physically speaking both. Now, typically they're not this chill. Like we've been very fortunate tonight. I timed things just right. He's already fed, which calms him down a lot more. 
Um, he's been out and exercised and played, which helps him to calm down a lot more. And he, in particular, has a great temperament for a mink. So all of those things combined have just our luck um, worked out tonight that we've been able to have him sitting still and being patient with us. But you have to realize that this is not the norm for mink. So most of the time, even with a super chill guy like him, they are super active and go, 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 go all the time. And then they crash, and we've been lucky enough to catch on film the crash stage. So the moments in between their hyper or, or their crashes are, are pretty hyper moments uh, that last for several hours. And most people, to be honest, cannot handle mink. The overwhelming majority of people, even the people who think they can, they just don't know what they're getting into. Uh, mink absolutely love to bite, and these guys have the equipment for it. Um, if you take a look, just like a ferret, they've got big old long sharp fangs, but unlike a ferret, ferrets actually have longer fangs than mink do, but, but unlike a ferret, they've got some ridiculous jaw power. This whole head right here is just pure muscle and made for just clamping down and crushing whatever gets in it. So very serious bite for such a tiny little critter. And that's pretty typical of the mustelid family. Uh, the weasels in general have very powerful jaws. Um, ferrets are the exception because they have a good 2,000 years of domestication behind them where they've selected for both very calm, placid temperaments compared to their wild counterpart. And also they've lost a lot of muscle mass. So they physically can't run as fast, jump as high, or bite as hard as their wild ancestor, the polecat. Um, and the reason being that's a benefit to uh, their use in captivity, which is for hunting rabbits. They don't really want them killing the rabbits. They want them chasing them out of the burrow into little nets or maybe to a hawk or a dog or someone with a gun. Something other than the ferret capturing the rabbit. The goal is basically push the rabbit out of the hole and if they do catch it underground, which they, they often do, then they've got the, the labor of digging it up, which isn't very fun and it's not very productive either because that one ferret is now stuck on the single rabbit instead of flushing multiples um, th thus reducing, drastically reducing the bag that you could have caught that day because your, your ferret's wasting time on one or two rabbits, right? So with mink, I actually hunt with these mink and a lot of times people who, don't, who aren't aware of what, they, what I do, they say, oh, it's like a ferret, so you're hunting with it like a ferret. Well, sometimes. So we do what you could call ferreting with a mink at times. We'll put mink down rabbit holes or rat holes or squirrel holes and have the mink basically go in and, and chase things out to dogs usually. That's usually how I'm, I'm hunting is with dogs. So we do that from time to time, but that's not the only way we hunt. We actually kind of more like falconry. I know that sounds weird, you know, bird. Uh, this is not exactly a bird. This is a furry little critter, right? These guys, we hunt with them a lot like you would a bird of prey where the goal is for them to capture the prey and then um, depending on the mink and depending on the training and depending on the prey that you're hunting, hopefully bring it back. Now that's not always the case. Uh, I'll, it's very, very, very difficult to train a mink to retrieve what they capture. And this little guy happens to be an excellent, just, just amazing individual when it comes to training for that specific thing. It's like Forrest Gump's mama always said, life's like a box of chocolates. Well, mink are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And that's the trickiest thing about mink. Whether you're keeping them as a pet or a working animal or, or any reason, the trickiest thing is you do not know what you have in your hands until that thing grows up. And even if you got an adult and you picked an adult out at a farm and you think you know what you've got, you could bring it home and, and three days later you're like, man, this is nothing like I thought I got. Um, they're really good at tricking you, even as adults, but as babies, it's not even a trickery. They're, they're not really showing their personality yet. They don't even know who they are yet. And the, the differences in personality is so shocking that if you're training them to do certain tasks like I do, like for hunting, that a method that works excellent for mink A is useless for mink B and mink C doesn't even need a method. He figures it out on his own. So you just don't know what you're going to run into when you get a mink. They can be extremely aggressive, like I mentioned earlier, very, very high maintenance, high activity animals. They love to destroy things and they love to kill things. So if you have other pets, you know, lizards, turtles, frogs, cats, rabbits, hamsters, things like that, there's a chance that mink wants might want to eat them. And even if it's something too big for the mink to eat, like a cat typically is not really in their normal prey range, um, but it could be depending on the mink. 
a cat or a dog, they might not even want to prey on it, but they will viciously, viciously torment and attack that poor animal. So they are very, very difficult animals to care for. And my videos, I honestly don't do a very good job at explaining that. Um, my channel isn't really focused on pet keeping. It's, it's more focused on their working abilities, but it's really something I, I really ought to put as a disclaimer on a regular basis. Man, these things are not good pets for 99.9% .9 of people. Way too difficult, way too complicated, way too dangerous. They're frankly a liability if you have one. Um, even if you get one like this that's super, super sweet to you, like Boone, he's been great today. He He's pretty nice with other people, but I don't trust him. I never really trust him, Inc., to be honest. But he was really good. He didn't, he didn't try and go after anyone today. And he's always good with me for the most part. Um, sometimes he'll get a little excited and he'll hurt me, but like I could put my finger in the mouth and I'm, I'm not worried about it at all. I trust him. He trusts me. However, he could easily attack someone else and, and not like you would think. So like people think of dogs like, oh, hey, if they know someone, like let's say an aggressive dog, um, if they know someone, they're fine with it. Mink often become what's called a exclusive or what we call exclusive, which means they like the person who raised them and that's it. And you could put a considerable amount of effort and ask my wife, she's done this multiple times with multiple different mink, put a considerable amount of effort into that animal thinking, oh, well, he'll like us both. And for whatever reason, they pick someone and it always seems to be me. They pick the other person and the other, the other person can't handle or even be around the mink, even sometimes be in the same room with the mink without being attacked. And so my poor wife's been through this over and over and over again. There's only been one mink out of all these years. We've been married for six and a half years and we've raised multiple mink together. And there's only been one that she could handle just as easily as I could handle. He might end up in just a few weeks or a few days or a few hours or a few months um, getting actually all out aggressive. We don't know. There's no way to know. Like I said, it's a box of chocolates. So we don't, we don't know what we got here. Um, I think he's gonna stay pretty chill. I think he's gonna stay pretty mellow and I don't think he's ever gonna be very outwardly aggressive towards people. But from what I've seen so far, my assumption is if the wrong person touched him at the wrong time, or, or I should say the wrong person being anyone but me, if someone else touched him at the wrong time, he's gonna give him a little bite and says, hey dude, leave me alone. And it's gonna hurt. It's gonna leave a bruise, possibly draw some blood. But I don't think he's gonna go all out and attack you like a lot of mink do um, when they're hand raised and they're bond to that one special person. So. Anyway, ton of things to keep in mind. These are not for the faint of heart. If you want a little weasel-like pet, great, go get a ferret. They're readily available. They've had 2,000 years of breeding in your favor, and they're cute little guys. These guys are for hard, hard, hardcore people with a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of pain tolerance. And if you don't have those three things, don't even think about it. Thank you so much, Joseph. That was incredible, and I've learned so much today about mink from you. Like this has been an awesome experience, once in a lifetime. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. You're doing great, I'm so happy with you. You do not like it all that much when I pet you though. A crazy, or a mink that hasn't been socialized at all. Did you think of a new term? You feel like hey, that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a proper term for just a completely unsocialized mink? That's now nah, you've got one. Yeah, I know I'm boring as heck. Just, <laughs> don't become a muskrat in the dream. <laughs> but you're not a monster. You're great. You're uh, such a great mink.